What's up guys, it is Starflord here and today we have another Dragon Age video. A long awaited, it is the jewel builder for the sabotage artifact to build. I must say I do prefer the artifact to build and this actually feels very similar in terms of OPness with the jewel wielding Tempest build. So really if you are a jewel wielding rogue you would switch between any of them. However if you are going for the archery kind of build I would definitely say go for this sabotage artifact to build. But anyway this is still a very nice build. Now I will be doing this build right now for the people that are around finishing the game and then kind of once they finished they uh, just finish they don't go on further um, so that you can get a build but then I will go on uh, to pick more spells and more passives for the people that go really really late game and also just quickly before we dive into this build I want to say gr thank you so much for the 200 subscribers we hit the other day hopefully by Christmas we're nearing 300 or I've even hit it I can't tell what will happen but it is extremely awesome to know that we've already hit the 200 subscribers so let's get into this sabotage to start off with poison weapons so it has a duration of 10 seconds that's on you uh, and it has a 25% weapon damage per second when you hit an enemy for 8 seconds with a cooldown time of 24 seconds and the cost of 20 summer which is really nice and moving on we are getting the leeching poison upgrade which means that you get 5% health whenever you attack enemies while poison weapons is active to bonus this and all of the other poisons you will get, you get Fighting Dirty Next, which means your poisons and your Sunder effects last 25% longer. So when enemies die whilst being poisoned by you, they will explode into this big toxic mist for 8 seconds in a radius of 3 meters for 50% weapon damage per second, which is extremely nice. And by the way, these all kind of stack up on each other, which is insane. Now we're going down to Toxic Cloud, which lasts 8 seconds, has a ra radius of 3 meters, damage of 15% weapon damage per second, and a cooldown time of 32 seconds, and a big cost of 50 stamina. But to make this very worthwhile, we are taking Lost in the Mist, which means you gain a stack of Elusive every few seconds, going up to 3. And what Elusive does is means you will just negate the next 3 attacks on you. That means you take no damage whatsoever, and all their effects are removed, including things like Free they just disappear now let's move on to clap traps which last 30 seconds on the floor have a radius of three meters and deal 10 percent weapon damage per second have a speed reduction of 25 percent and a cooldown time of 15 seconds now it doesn't actually say how long it lasts but we will be going on getting the treading lightly which has means the radius is bigger so it's five meters and when they are hit they also get a bleed duration of 10 seconds which is extremely nice we're going to go down into look like it hurt, which is a very, very key passive to this build, which is something you probably won very quickly, which is whenever you score a critical strike, you regain 10 stamina, uh, and this will tie in later to why we can pretty much spam spells constantly all the time. Now we're going into cheap shot, which means your critical hits tear through the enemy armor, leaving it sundered. Now you can tell already that crits are a big part of this build, so do go into crits, uh, and also I will show why in a bit. Late game, people can do this build so much better. Now throwing blades is next up, which is one of the key spells in this build, along with the passive of look like it hurt but throwing base is one of the key spells uh, which has four hits each hit deals 100% weapon damage and they are sundered for eight seconds and the cooldown is 12 seconds which will be uh, removed and stamina cost of 50 stamina which also will get removed eventually when we get throughout this whole build now we are going to go into precision targeting which means if you hit the same target more than once each each knife will deal 25% more damage and this bonus stack so the first one will do 25% more the next will do 50% and so on and so on now that is sabotage done uh, we also want to go into artifactor now spike trap is pretty pointless we've just got it in the build because we have and now and then you want opportunity knocks which means when an ally critically hits you take advantage of their success faster with reduced cooldown times of 0 0.5 seconds and this is what makes this build insane along with the look like it hurt 
Now we're going to go up to set them up, which means your traps and things do 25% damage bonus. That also works for your clap traps. Elemental Mines is another key ability in this build. Now each mine will deal 175% weapon damage, but each effect gains a different bonus. If you get a frost mine, it will deal a uh, it will chill the enemy for 8 seconds. If it's a fire, it will deal an extra 50% weapon damage per second for 8 seconds, and if it's a lightning one, it will shock them for 8 seconds. So this has a cooldown time of 24 seconds and a cost of 50 stamina. Now you want to th get the uh, upgrade throw everything, which means for ex every 5 stamina extra, you will throw one more mine, which is incredible. And then we want to annotate them down, which gives you uh, more crit, which is so much nicer. Now let's move on to the rest of the build. We actually want to change twin fangs here. Sorry, I messed that up a bit. My bad. But yeah, put Twin Fangs there because it's a precision detonator. And if you get that tied in with Elemental Mines properly, it's great. So the next key ability in this build, well, there's actually two. Four main key abilities, which is these three, uh, to this build, which you def definitely, definitely need. And the rest are just bonuses on top of bonuses. So well, let's go into the next key ability, which is Flank Attack, which means you will hit the target two times, each dealing 200% weapon damage. Have a cooldown of 8 seconds and a cost of 35 stamina. And we are taking Skirmisher, which means you go into Stealth which makes you impossible to find, uh, which is how we actually get into stealth without taking stealth. Next, you're taking Blood Bray, which means if some if an enemy is lower health than you, you will do 10% more damage to them. Nice. Unforgiving Chain, which means each hit you additionally do will have a greater crit chance of 2%, uh, and then will get reset once you crit, and that's a bonus on top of your current uh, critical hit chance. Next you're going in Spinning Blaze which hits 5 times, deals 75% weapon damage, uh, area of 6 meters and a cooldown time of 16 seconds and a cost of 65 stamina. Now we're taking the never ending spinning which means we get more hits which means we can get more crits which means we get more resets, more, st more stamina and everything like that. Next, we are going into Twin Fangs. Obviously, it's very good for the precision date. Uh, pre pre Obviously, it's very good for the precision detonator with the elemental mines. Each hit uh, does 200% weapon damage, and you get two hits. And if you are flanking them, you actually get an extra bonus of 200% on each hit. So it's a total of 800 if you're behind them. Cooldown of 8 seconds and a cost of 50 stamina. Now we're going to go down into Death Dance, which means for every kill you gain 50% stamina, which helps again. And then we're taking Sneak Attack, which makes this build incredibly nice for dual wielders, which means when you're behind them, you have a 100% crit chance. So no matter what you do, you will get your resets and everything like that. Now that is the build in total for uh, the dual wielding rogue. Now I will quickly now go into the more advanced build. Uh, for people that have way more ability points just like me. So we're going to take stealth to be able to get the clinging shadows to get three more seconds in stealth, which is really nice. Get evasion uh, so we can dodge some things and then go down into armor penetration uh, because, let's be real, armor penetration is insane. Um, now, I'm not actually going to take uh, shadow strike with uh, the quick blade upgrade like I did in the... Uh, um, like I did in the archery build, because I find Twin Fangs actually works really, really well with the Elemental Mines. Uh, but anyway, anywho, let's move on. We'll go into Twin Fangs uh, and get the upgrade of Ripping Fangs. If you want, you can take the Unyielding Fangs, because it means you get better damage even if you're facing them. Uh, and that is legit. it. That's the upgrades you need. It's mainly just, just getting the extra stealth bonus. Uh, and that is all you need. So I will quickly go into combat to show you guys this build in action on... Let me just quickly save that there. On Nightmare with the hard trials on. Uh, so it will be pretty difficult just like my archer build. Uh, and I will go in and show it here where I've been doing it previously for quite a while. Let's go. Right, so let's get going. Now there is a target in here I can flank attack, which is really nice to be able to get into stealth there. Uh, I gotta say, its effect looks absolutely insane. Now we're gonna position ourselves. I'm also gonna bring my mage out because uh, for some reason I found some bugs where if I keep him back there, uh, they kind of just wander off and don't bother attacking me, which kind of 
makes the gameplay pointless. Uh, so I'll move in there to make sure that's not the case. Now the first thing you always want to do is lay mines because they can get out ridiculous amounts of crit. Uh, and here I'm just auto attacking. Auto attacking is actually very useful. And then I go in with some uh, throwing up blades and flank attack. And you can see the combo. It was absolutely insane. Here, absolutely ridiculous damage from the elemental mines there. Uh, absolutely just blowing everyone up. And you can see I'm mainly just using flank attack, throwing blades, and basically just my auto attacks. Because unlike the archer, uh, your auto attacks as a dual wood rogue are much stronger in the terms of you can attack more. Uh, and you can see there I've also got the 10% chance to hit, use hidden blades. Uh, but here I've just put poison weapons on and, and then started auto attacking for some crits. And just to kill this guy because right now I'm kind of safe. Uh, and now this is the kind of rogue v rogue. Now, I accidentally misclicked it. But there we go. Well, put poison down and I can actually see his black slur around. Just getting prepared for him to try and attack me. And he can actually one shot me. Uh, it's happened before uh, sometimes where I have just been one shot. But there you go. Some insane combo with the throwing blades crits. Which are just absolutely ridiculous. And there's these two over here that seem to be bugged out. There's always a few bugged out. And thankfully it's only two so it hasn't made this... Uh, worse in any case but just throwing throwing blades flank attack and you see flank attack itself basically gets hidden blades back and that hidden blades there is a much better display of what it can do it absolutely ripped apart that um archer just destroying them uh, and you can with blade dance get some insane damage out on that it's just in this case i found that throwing blades can sometimes be a lot more effective uh, compared to blade dance especially in the first case where there was the kind of warrior with shield because what can happen is you start to blade dance you hit the shield and it just destroys your kind of combo you stop blade dancing and you've just you wasted a stamina basically so you've got to watch out uh, for them obviously target the archers because in this again with these trials they could one shot me uh, it is possible so you want to be able to shut them down but also those tanks so guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of a build video. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment below, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.